Uh. Oh, der. Okay, so you didn't see what I did there, but um, I tried to do a, obviously, landing on the moon. Uh, didn't exactly go too well. Um, I tried to use the Nimbus lander, but it obviously didn't work. Uh, as it didn't have enough Delta V. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and use the parts that you saw me unlock before to make it to the moon. So I'm going to have to do all the same things again. So I'm going to basically rebuild. Actually, better idea. Let's open up let's open up the moon one and just take off the entire lower stage uh, all of that so this is the rocket we're now working with uh, we can give it more delta V and we can do that because we have better rockets which apparently is something that I was apparent like capable of forgetting but I, I don't know um, anyway so this is probably, we're going to want to move obviously the parts around obviously because they're a little bit not where I want them all to be because obviously I've got to pick them up and rotate them. So we're just going to, landing laser is going to move anyway so we're going to put some more fuel tanks at the bottom of this. Uh, but we can afford to put more Delta V on these because we have stronger rockets that are obviously capable of moving a heavier weight. So yes, we can afford to do that. Uh, we can also really afford to use the fuel lines and detach these off if we were really trying to be efficient. But I don't think that's necessary. Plus you might not have got as much uh, science points as I did. And you really want to you know, not be having to do so much. Uh, anyway, so we've got an extra few thousand Delta V here. Uh, let's, wait, do you know what? Actually, no, no, no. Just to be completely safe, I am going to put fuel lines and decouplers on this. That's not the one we want. We want the smaller ones. There we are. And then we can put those on the decouplers. And we're going to have to rotate everything around the exit. So slightly move. Because we're replacing. And what this means is that we'll get even more delta V when we detach them. So we'll have the external fuel duct running from these tanks to the central tank which means that when we fire this engine we're getting a little bit more delta V so we had about 4000 we now have 4500 so that's how much delta V we're getting from doing that we're getting about an extra 400 so that'll cover our landing now we're going to strut it all together just to be safe so I'll strut this to here and oh actually never mind yes yeah, we'll strut so now we're going to obviously we're getting to the construction of the lower stage now you may be thinking now we have a heavier load at the top we're going to need uh, our, our, you know, our basic rockets and pieces won't be able to lift it you would be right however uh, obviously we unlocked a few extra pieces uh, we unlocked the skipper engine mainly being the one that I'm referring to uh, it basically has a lot more thrust than any of the other engines, so we're basically capable of. Where is it? There is. So we're capable of getting out of the surface, out out of Kerbin. Sorry, with more delta V on the rocket. So yes, uh, everything is in due correctness. So let's just put the liquid fuel engine on. So this has already got 2,000 meters per second just from like moving this. Uh, so let's put a decoupler at the bottom of this TD25, because they're 2.5 meters. And then we're going to want to put some more Rocker Max pieces. Where are they? Two of these this time. Like so. And this is just going to be what we're going to use to get out of uh, orbit. So we're going to want to put another Skipper engine. This will probably have around the same. Actually, which one has more thrust? 3, 7, 4, 5, 8, 7, 6, 4. Okay, so the one that has the most thrust is obviously the skipper engine, which is what we're using here. Uh, this is going to be what's going to get us out of like the lower atmosphere, I suppose you'd say. I suppose you'd say it is what I'm saying. Um, 
and we're obviously going to need, well we don't need, but it would be beneficial if we, actually, I'm better at it, instead of using SRBs, let's use some more rocket max pieces, because we can use liquid fuel engines to lift this up, which is uh, something that I always sort of neglect, I always forget that you need to use liquid fuel instead of solid fuel, uh, all the time, but not this time. So we're going to put a few extra tanks along the bottom here, uh, put four skipper engines with uh, aerodynamic nose cones and stuff like that. I don't think we're going to need any, uh, we'll, we'll put like another fuel tank at the top of this. I'll um, look to my right and see that this is actually negatively affecting the amount of Delta V we have, but that's what we're doing. Oh no, it's actually giving us more. Okay, so we'll put a, del uh, a cone on the top of this. Strut it all up, obviously. Oh yeah, structure, structure, and structures, as a matter of fact. Uh, so let's strut it all together. And we're going to want to strut the bomb just to be safe. And there we go. So now let's sort the staging out. So we want, this is at sea level, we want to be looking at. So the bottom four engines will fire, then they'll decouple, then the middle engine will fire, then that'll decouple, then that'll fire. Then that'll decouple. Okay, I, I believe I'm looking at the right things anyway. Um, so by this point, by the end of like here, we're in a vacuum, so we can sort of see how the Terrier engine is going to start using. So, so yeah, this is all looking fine, as a matter of fact. I believe this rocket is more than capable of getting us to the Mun. So I'm going to save it and overwrite it because the but the previous one didn't actually make it to Menmus, or to Man, sorry. But yes, this should, emphasis on should, work. So let's just ensure that we've got Bob instead of Jebediah. And I suppose there's nothing else to do other than launch. So let's go. So you might have seen, uh, we have 10,000 meters per second or something close enough to that number of Delta V in space. Uh, so, well, in space, it's basically the same as being around 40,000 meters, so anywhere above here, roughly. Um, so we have a lot of Delta V to be playing with here, so this is likely to be more than enough we need to get to Minmus. So if you, uh, to Min. So if you do do this, uh, if you want to use this rocket build, uh, it Assuming you have the parts, obviously it's very easy to use and very easy to get to members. Um, we're going to need some more thrust. This is not something I took into account for. Uh, I didn't actually think it would be too heavy. Ah! It bloody isn't, they've done it. We're off to a blazing start, but they have lifted it. Um, <laughs> So it might be beneficial for you to take like one or two more fuel tanks off of this. Uh, like I said, uh, in the development stage of this, I didn't really take into account the thrust to weight ratio. Uh, if you have them, you'd really want to be using main sails instead of the uh, skippers. The skippers are not really capable of putting too much thrust to weight ratio, but the main sails are much better at it, which is obviously what you want later. So anyway. Now we've actually started to get some of the built up that thrust that we need, we can start doing gravity turn. We want to point roughly just shy of the uh, central upward point really, we want to be around about 0.5 degrees uh, towards the most degree vector. Uh, and this stage will hopefully get us out of the lower atmosphere, because once we're out of the lower atmosphere, like I have no doubt that the, the ship is going to get us get the, the moon. Uh, it was just the start, I was a little bit shaky. <laughs> so anyway, once we're out of the, the thickest part of the atmosphere, the engine will work better, because there's less air resistance adding on us, so we don't have to, obviously, worry. Also, the effect of gravity is a lot less, as you see, we're speeding up quite a considerable amount now. You know, if we look at our apple atmosphere, it's probably up to about 10,000. Almost, yeah. So, we are rapidly approaching the point where we can start being more confident in this mission, which currently um, I believe we're going to well. So we are going to probably burn up if we don't slow down. 
Uh, I don't, we don't really want to be going more than like 800 meters per second when we leave the atmosphere. So we can probably start turning a little bit more laterally now. I'd say roughly around this mark is where I like to go to do mine. Uh, for some reason, this always does it when the rockets are in. I'm not entirely sure why, but whenever I use the D key to move, it always twists my rockets. Um, I suppose because I haven't got any inline reaction wheels. Well, the ones I do have are all the way at the top, so they're not really doing much to affect the lower stages. Uh, we might as well just full throttle, use all this fuel, just burn it out, because uh, we do have another stage. And that stage should more than happily uh, circularize us, but in the event that it doesn't, we've obviously got a yet another stage that we can use. So we want to keep burning mainly at this vector, uh, it's not really putting too much stress on our fuel reserves and also we've got you know, plenty of fuel to increase that 40 to about, uh, it should definitely reach the 70,000 mark that we're looking for. Uh, at the very worst, if this doesn't all go to the plan, at least it will get us to into space and then we can use obviously this monumental 2,585 delta V uh, to get us to, actually as a matter of fact, I think this will also, like both of them, we're going to use both of these engines to obviously, um, obviously both of these engines are going to be used to get us into orbit, but I think the latter part of this delta V here can also be used to get us into the moon and get us, you know, in a circular orbit, I don't think we're actually going to have to use the lander at all. I think the mainly the transfer stage is going to be most of the work for us here, which, for most people, makes sense, because most people build rockets that way. Unfortunately, I do not constitute as most people. Um, I am not a professional. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we've obviously broken the Kármán line here, and we're now going to start focusing all of our energy into lateral movements. Uh, obviously, you can see our periapsis isn't that high at the moment. Uh, we are slowly getting closer to our periapsis, which is not good. We will be getting slightly further away, however that will swiftly change rather quickly. Uh, or at least it should do, because we're going to have to burn all this fuel. And then we're going to uh, be lighter, and we're going to have to be able to move more. So, there is that. I do believe uh, once you have these heavier Rockamax pieces, as well as the engines that are capable of lifting them, I don't recommend buying the engines that can lift them before you have uh, the fuel tanks as well as vice versa. You don't really want to be buying the heavier fuel tanks until you can lift them. Uh, obviously, you don't have engine plates at this point, so it's kind of pointless using the smaller engines to try and lift because you just simply won't have enough thrust. But as soon as you can lock both of the nodes that will give you these items, get them both. They are very helpful in terms of getting to places. As a matter of fact, I do believe this rocket would be capable of getting to, you know, places like Juno. Uh, because that's basically what the general rule of thumb is. If you have a rocket that can go to the moon, you have a rocket that can go to Juno. Uh, as you can see, we obviously want to be using a lot less thrust here, as we are a lot lighter and do not need to be using all window mode. So, <laughs> no, stop. There we go. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're not getting closer and we're not getting further away, we're going to sort of maintain this distance. Uh, we've got lots and lots of fuel, like this This is a lot of fuel, we do not need all of this by far, we're going to be ditching a considerable amount uh, of fuel in orbit of uh, the, the man. If you have watched other playthroughs of Science Mode, uh, one considerably that I like to think about, and one that personally I used to uh, gain a better understanding of this game, I used, well, two sources really. Number one, and uh, probably the one I use the most, and still currently do, uh, just out of entertainment, I used uh, Scott Manley's and Matt Lowne's uh, playthroughs. Mainly Matt Lowne, as I believe obviously Scott Manley has sort of found other pastures are new, uh, and uh, doesn't really do KSP anymore. But uh, Matt Lowne is very, very good at providing good content and uh, I suppose information yeah I mean that's what he does he is he does provide information again um, 
In fact, he has a whole playthrough called Lown Arrow's Face. Uh, I, re I recommend watching that. That's a lot of what I did in order for me to learn everything that I'm then conveying to you. But the other source that I used was Reddit. Uh, some, well, the Kerbal Academy subreddit is a very, very good place. There's lots of people that are quite skilled at the game uh, that are uh, capable of helping you. So I, I do recommend using that. And we don't need, really need to focus on getting an efficient encounter with a low periapsis, but I am going to do it anyway, because I want to. So, we're going to want to go pro-grade, I think it's more, yeah, more pro-grade, uh, in order to, okay, so we can't get any more that way. Okay, so we can't really get an encounter much more efficient than about there, so we'll fire the it's going to be a fairly short burn because we've got like a massive engine that's capable of doing a lot of burning uh, very efficiently. Well, not efficiently, very quickly. Uh, and we're quite light at the moment, so obviously we don't really need to focus on doing that much. Uh, anyway, the reason I was talking about this is because in Matt Lowndes' playthrough, uh, he, he made a very good, consistent point about not leaving debris in space. Um, you may have already gathered, I am not like that. I do not care how much debris is in space, because to me, I can just you know, stop tracking them. My tracking center and that will generally have as much peace of mind as it needs to give me. But, uh, once you reach a certain amount of objects in space, it becomes hard for the game to load. The game sort of struggles to keep track of everything, so it's always good to make sure there's no space junk cluttering up the amount of cash you need to use or uh, I don't know, whatever the game uses to load really, the loads can become really long once you have too many things in space and it just becomes a little bit, you know, boring but I'm not really going to burn anymore because I don't need to I've got an encounter here so it's a fairly long encounter as well so it's not even like it's one where I'm going to have to do too much uh, let's add a maneuver here. Now you may be wondering how Jeb is alive, because obviously I couldn't revert the flight, and I couldn't, like, so I, 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 like, I couldn't revert the flight because we'd already loaded a quick save. So how? Uh, basically, if you use Alt F12, it brings up the debug menu. It's, ba it's something you can use if you really get stuck and you just like you know really want to do something but don't have the ability to uh, personally I'm going to be avoiding using it as much as I can but I really didn't want Jeb to die that early on um, and it wasn't any way of getting him back from the run and I just completely scrapped the whole uh, mission as a whole so all I did was uh, set position to Kerbin I had all my science on board the ship as well which is a problem so what I had to do was just uh, EVA and deploy the Kerbal parachute rather than landing with the rest of the ship uh, because if I landed with the rest of the ship, it would just give me all the science. I really didn't want to do that. So we're going to have to do all the science yet again. Which, to be fair, isn't much of an issue. Uh, so we're going to speed on down. Make sure we don't miss the maneuver node. Just going to quick save here just in case I do. Nearly dead there. And we're going to want to burn here. It's going to be a fairly short burn, because obviously, like I said earlier, we've got a really good thrust to weight ratio on this engine. But I do believe this engine is going to get us into a circular orbit, so we're going to be able to get the most out of the lander as possible. Uh, let's just close out that, because it doesn't really matter uh, anymore. Because I can sort of eyeball the rest of it, and it's much easier, and it's less cluttered. So anyway, what we want to do here is we want to do all of our science, of course, because we're in high carbon orbit. No, not high carbon orbit, you know what I mean. A high orbit of the Moon. Uh, so let's do all of our science. Like, you watch me. Uh, I don't really like these parts of the videos because it's just. You're just watching me uh, right click and left click <laughs> uh, with a few gaps in between. But, um, I mean, that's kind of what the game is. So um, if you don't like watching that sort of thing. Why Why are you watching this? Um, I mean, I'm not complaining, but why? 
So you saw me there just uh, EBA report. What I meant to do was crew report first. Maybe I already did it. Did I already do one? Hmm. Maybe I did. Uh, anyway, so we're going to want to go and collect all of this data. So let's. Oh, we're now too far away. Collect, restore. There we go. So that means that we can now use the materials bay more than once. We're going to want to collect. We might as well restore, even though we don't need to. Uh, we'll take and we will take the thermometer. We don't want to forget about that. Uh, as well as doing an EVA report, which I haven't done yet. There we go. And now we can get back into our rocket with, I think it's six pieces of science we have here. If I store all the data we have, we do indeed have six pieces of data. Uh, I know that because when I tried to do this mission before, I had 19 pieces of data and crashed and burned. So, we still want to be pointing towards the retrograde marker, uh, because we're about to go around to periapsis over here. Oh, overshot a little bit. There we are. We're at periapsis now. And now we can do all of that science again. And we also can burn to sort of. Well, not sort of. We are burning to uh, stay, not stabilize, circularize. So we're just going to do that now. Very short burn because obviously, like I said, very good thrust to weight ratio. I'm just going to go around to periapsis again because it's run away from us a little bit. There we go. And we're now. Okay, so we're basically a very, you know, circular orbit here. Uh, we've got barely any fuel left in this tank anyway, but it's not really a problem because it's done what we needed it to do. But anyway, we are now more than definitely uh, in. Oh, I forgot to do the thing. <laughs> Hold on. Uh. So basically, I, like I mentioned this before, but if you need to do more than one uh, crew report, you can just take and store data again. It'll allow you to do it. I don't know why it does that, but yeah, well. Uh, so crew report. Uh, we're going to want to do all of our little science again. So we're going to want to do mystery goo. Yes, we definitely want to do that. We're going to want to do thermometer, which isn't this one. This is pressure. This one's thermometer. And we're going to want to do the science junior. Uh, well, if anything, you want to do the science junior one, like, primarily, because it gets you the most science. Ironically enough, uh, we're now going to EVA, EVA report, and now we're going to go collect all of our science. Uh, I think we do have experiment containment units, which uh, you don't need them. They sort of just speed this process up. Uh, but I will probably start doing them. I actually, what I might do is I might start using action groups to do all of the science we have at once. Uh, then I don't have to go and manually do it, but I will still have to go out and collect it. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so let's take the data. I believe I did forget to reset this. Not that it matters because I am a, you know, Bob is a scientist, so he can, like, reset it whenever he wants. And we do have four uh, Mr. Goo units on the ship just for the sake of symmetry. I thought it looked a little bit nicer, so. Oh well. So we're going to take it all and store it all, so that gives us 12, which is exactly the amount that we needed to get maximum amounts of, you know, science. Uh, we're now, what are we, at periapsis still. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn just a tad apoapsis, I think I'm going to do. Or maybe even just past apoapsis and here. Because I'm hoping what that means. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay. It turns out I wasn't actually on the retrograde mark, which is where I needed to be, obviously. So we're going to want to get a landing zone. Uh, this landing zone is in a crater, so it's obviously going to be rather easy to land in, because it's a big crater. Um, there's not really easy places to land on them. I have tried, and I, I, unfortunately I didn't record it, but in one of my other save files, I have managed to get a rover up here. You can't do anything with it, <laughs> but it is up there. So, you know. 
So we're going to need to decouple that stage because we, we, we can't land with it. So we are now also going to need to activate the next stage and just burn a little bit to get us away from it. And we are now on a good collision course. Uh, we need to be looking at this side because obviously this is the side that's going to be impacting on. Uh, and we need to be turning our action gear. Uh, we're at 500 meters per second, which is, you know, it's, it's roughly what we would have been expe expecting from a moon landing. And I want to start burning roughly around 6,000 sort of height. Um, like, that's the height at which, you know, you, you really need to start. Uh, for some reason we're pointing directly upside down, which is definitely not where I want to be looking. Uh, it looks like we are going to land on the dark side of the moon. Uh, we've lost, as you see, maneuver node control there, so it's, it, it's not really a problem. We don't really need to make maneuver nodes where we are now. And I'm almost certain if I extended my community on here, I would be able to do it anyway. Let's have a look. Oh, no. Okay, so we must must be uh, behind. Yeah, we are. We're behind uh, the moon is obstructing our sort of connection, I suppose. So we're going to start burning to kill off our speed. We don't want to be impacting the surface at 500 meters per second. That's an absurd amount of speed. Might as well just, you know, really inefficiently burn and kill it all off because we don't really need to be too conservative with our fuel because we do have a you know, 2,000 just to land, 2,000 to get back. The only thing I am slightly concerned about is that we aren't really decreasing our speed that quickly. And uh, we, did, we obviously are, we started our burn very early. Which meant that we could obviously kill off all this speed, because I really don't want to be approaching the ground at 300 meters per second. Okay, so you may have not seen it there, but I am going to have to detach that stage because we are not but slowing down as quickly as we need to. Uh, that stage had my landing legs on it, didn't it? Okay, <laughs> this is going to be a little bit more of a perilous landing then, I guess. Uh, I really didn't think that part through. Uh, but um, we do still have plenty of Delta V. Uh, to get to and fro, we're just going to have to balance the entire shuttle off of the uh, engine, I guess. So we may, again, I have to make sure we're going very slowly when we land here. So we're going to have to keep. We're going to have to basically decouple that node almost instantly. Down there. We're going to make sure that we're still following that retrograde line because. Yeah. Unfortunately, the place that I've quick saved meant that we are in a very unfortunate place. Uh, I didn't really think that through. Uh, obviously, we probably needed a lot more time to kill off all that speed, and we probably should have killed off all the speed in orbit using the big engine I had still. But you know, like, there's only so much you can really do. Uh, although this should be fine, as we have obviously killed off a lot of our speed as is. I don't believe we're going to impact the surface. Okay, no, 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 we're fine. We're fine. We, we are completely fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong. And by nothing wrong, I mean that there, there, there could very easily be something wrong that will happen in the due time. We are about to land. But unfortunately, because obviously it's Ooh. Oh dear. 
Oh dear. Uh, um. Uh, how? I suppose the inline reaction wheel has allowed us to stay upright a little bit. Unfortunately, it's not done what I needed to do. <laughs> so, um, right, we'll just reload because I did make a quick save by the time we hit the ground anyway. Uh, we're just going to need to try and stand the ship up because unfortunately I did forget to bring landing legs. Actually, um, maybe it would stand up like this on its own. If I EVA, no, it won't. Can I do? Um, so I'm going to have to try my best to stand this up. The problem is I don't know what keys do what. Oh dear. If I click orbit. Uh, okay, so if I point directly at radial in, I believe. No, it's radial out. I always get that really confused because it doesn't look like in the picture that it's uh, that the picture is radial out. But it is. Uh, so if I point orbital and go radial out, that will hold my ship straight up. And we have no need to worry anymore, I do not think. Oh, no, no, no. Just, just stability assist. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's make sure we set it to stability assist. And then to the surface. Okay. So we are standing up right here. And I want to spend as little time as we possibly can uh, on the surface of the moon. Because I really am quite concerned about the ship toppling over. Because if it does topple over, uh, there's not an awful lot we can do uh, as we don't have any RCS. We do have the inline reaction wheel. So I suppose that does something. But... The thing I'm mostly worried about is the fact that we have to do the crew report, which obviously that, that, that's not too difficult, um, but we have to do the EVA report and the surface sample, which as you can see have just thrown us off completely. Uh, so EVA report, take, surface sample, take. So let me just board, that's toppled us over. Like, you know, that's, that's something we can see. So let's point orbitally radial out and see if that will pick us up again. Oh, would you look at that. That is beautiful. So we did, we do currently have all of our science. Uh, we should have 14. And then we should have 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4 there. 14. What science have I missed? Stored. Men's Highlands. Yeah. I really can't be bothered to look through it all. Um, it's probably the crew report. So if I do this, take data, store data. Yeah, it was. So if I point radio out again, there we go. So this is basically the always bring, you know, inline reaction wheels. They will save you. But anyway, uh, that's all we need to do. So let's just get off. Oh, I didn't think about that. So that's F9. Oh, I hope I quick save. <laughs> How much store data do I have? I don't think I did the crew report here, which is why it's obviously... For some reason it stores itself in the command pod, but it doesn't actually. I don't know why. Anyway, there we go. Take data, and we want to make sure that we're pointing radially uh, in terms of orbit. And 
now make sure our ship is standing nice and erect. That sounds a bit odd. Uh, stability assist. And there we go. Okay, so let's quick save just there to make sure that nothing else can physically go wrong. Uh, and then we'll just start burning upwards. Uh, we can basically start burning. We'll throttle back just a tad. And we'll, we can start burning toward the 90 degree vector almost instantly in space because obviously like what is there that will possibly have any effect on us so let's just point flat almost flat uh, to the to the side and just max burn and that will help us escape the mud We don't really need a very high periaps or apoaps at all because of the, the, the more we're going to crash into, more than it's not going to the atmosphere isn't going to pull us in because it doesn't have one. So we're going to use. We don't really need to be conservative. Obviously, if you were on the moon and you were you know, struggling with Delta V, you probably could do a more efficient burn than this, but we don't need to because, well, like I said, we have the Delta V, so we don't, we don't have to. Uh, but we are on a fairly similar orbit to. Uh, to Kerbits, Kerbins, in terms of its uh, like positioning, I suppose you could call it. Uh, we are going to have to. I'm going to circularize here. We don't like normally you wouldn't have to, but I don't have a correct like connection to the KSC. I don't even think if I opened up my uh, antenna, I don't even think that would uh, give me connection to the KSC. No. So I'd much prefer the ability to be able to make. So I am just going to circularize it just a bit. There we go. Uh, so until we are in connection with the KSC, which we are now. Um, unfortunately, we were down. I think we can make maneuver nodes, we just can't edit them or delete them. So if we make a maneuver node here, and just burn all the way out until we escape, which we have there. Uh, I don't want to be throwing myself out of the Kerbal system, that would not be good. Okay, so it seems to be like very particular with what it wants to give me and what it doesn't. So we'll go for that. Uh, and then we'll F5 to quick save. Wait until we get around there. So yeah, we can't actually like delete or edit this uh, maneuver node anymore, but we can still follow it. So that's all that matters. Um, we will be ejected from the moon's sort of sphere of influence, not even sort of sphere of influence, we will be ejected from the sphere of influence of the moon here. And that has put us into uh, an, base, an escape from the atmosphere. Not the atmosphere, an escape from the moon. So we are now officially out of the moon's grasp or sphere of influence. What I do want to do now is we'll retract that because I don't really want it getting broken. Not that it will do anything. So I need to make sure that I collect all of my data because I didn't do that on the moon. Which which ones did I use? It doesn't look like I did a uh, mystery goo, but that's fine. I, you know, I'm not really fast. It's only a little bit of science. I would have missed probably about twenty. I'm hoping it was only the mystery view that I missed and not like everything else, but actually No, I think I definitely I might have I might have accidentally missed uh the the pieces of data, which is slightly annoying. I think I did. Oh I mean, at this point, I really can't be fast, you know, it's, it's, it's given me all of the points I think I'll ever need uh, in order to get in and out of Kerbin, so that's, that's I'm, I'm fine with it, essentially. Um, so, when you do this mission, make sure that you do not miss this, um, because that will be fairly important to you. Well, 
Well, I imagine if you're doing a science beta, at least it would not be important, but it would it would it would help. So let's just you know burn our periapsis all the way down into Kerbin's atmosphere, or if not into Kerbin's atmosphere, just above it. We don't really have to do any aero braking because I think we can like just circularize a little bit in order to reduce our speed. But just in case we can't, obviously we want to watch. Oh, never mind. Okay, we are aero braking. <laughs> so um, yeah, that appears to be the trajectory I put us on. So we're just going to have to aero brake, I guess. Uh, what just happened there? Um, little bit confused. What's just happened? You might have just seen it. I apparently just went through Kerbin without it actually taking any note of me. Okay, I, I, I guess we're doing that again. So let's burn retrograde and just use up all of the fuel we have, because we might as well. Gonna need to decouple that and keep pointing retrograde. Just slow down. There's some fireworks that very easily could have killed us, uh, but it didn't. We are coming in very quickly into the atmosphere. Uh, as you can see, our G force went right the way up, and it still is all the way up. But we have drone shoots for this very reason, uh, just in case this ever happened to us. Which we did. So it was probably a good thing that we did bring drone shoots. Um, so we're probably going to miss out on about like 150 science points, but like, who really cares? It's, you know, it's something that I can make up with easily. Uh, and we can pull another um, parachute. So the drone. I personally always bring drone shoots just in case we ever left in a situation like that where drone shoots. But oh, a bit of. Debris, I guess, survived re-entry. Yeah, it didn't really survive the impact. But uh, I always like to bring parachutes like this, just in case we ever end up on a really steep re-entry. Uh, and obviously can't do anything about it. So, uh, let's cut all of that, just do a crew report here, because we haven't done one here. Uh, do a EVA report as well. Uh, and just board the ship again. And now we just got to wait for it to slowly descend. So anyway, like I said, make sure, it, like, if you're really trying to sort of do this sort of thing, like complete the tech tree, you'll find it beneficial to actually do the science uh, instead of just leaving, you know, instead of not doing it. That would probably help if you did it. Um, I clearly forgot to, or like in the case of like reloading and quick saving, I forgot to. So it's it, it's not really an issue. Uh, I don't like the fact that I've landed on the side of a mountain. Um, <laughs> anyway, the parachute is still attached, which means like they're not going to really end up going faster than like three meters per second anyway. So it's not really detrimental uh, to us. I'm gonna, okay, so let's just time warp down the mountain, I guess. There we go. Okay, so we can now recover. Actually, no, let's do it. EVA report. I think we can do one here. Yes, we can. And we might as well take a surface sample as well because we, like, we're here. Take, store, board, crew report. And we'll recover the vessel. So, if you did this mission, you would have got, assuming you did all the science, you would have got like roughly about 150 extra science points. Um, but I got 572, so you would have got about 600 science points. So really, you know, it's, it's there's not much difference uh, in terms of doing them or not. But anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. It obviously went on for quite long, as I actually did two moon landings, but only one returned. So next time we are, well, there's really nowhere else we can go. We can either go into deep space and get some science from around the sun, or we can knock two birds out with one stone and we can go to Juna. Um, 
I think I know which one I prefer. So I will see you in the next one, which is probably going to be recorded straight after this. But I will see you in the next one.